Hey everybody, Mark with the comics and I'm back. This time I'm going to be doing a VR for Bearded and Cole's top 10 comics for this month. And this month's uh, challenge is going to be fight covers. So if you're interested in seeing my top 10 fight covers, stay tuned for that intro. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so when I do put out some content, you get it in a timely fashion. So I'm excited today because I'm going to be showing you guys my top 10 covers for the month of November for his challenge, which is fight covers. And I'm pretty excited because fight covers, you know, they do attract me when I see a really good fight cover. I want to see a good chunk of my collection is you know, fight cover related, some action sequence, just something, you know, eye popping that, you know, that just gauges me. So, um, I'm going to show you my top 10 covers. Um, not necessarily my best, not the worst. Um, what I wanted to kind of focus on is just show you 10 covers that hasn't yet been shown during the video challenge. Um, some covers you may have seen before, some you may not be familiar with, and uh, so we'll just stick to that. Um, so in no particular order, you know, like. Get over here. And uh, here we are. So we're going to get a little, little variety here, some modern, some um, bronze, silver, and golden age. So, like I said, in no particular order. Um, I do like this cover. This one really, really caught my eye when I first saw this book. And uh, this is Secret Wars 2, issue number 3. Um, this is just a great cover. You see a lot of the um, Marvel characters here fighting, you know, the Beyonder. Um, this was just a great series. This is not volume 1. This is volume 2, like it says on there. I believe this is the first cover appearance of the Beyonder. I could be wrong. Or the first full appearance of the Beyonder. It's one of those. I know it's a it's a minor key. Um, it's just a cool cover. You see him, you know, just overseeing the earth, looking like he's about to conquer it. So um, if you don't have this book, I highly recommend it and definitely checking out the series. So that's number 10. Um, number nine. This comes from a, a little known publisher during the I want to say the mid 70s um, this publisher only lasted about I think two years I want to say something like that it was um, started by Larry Lieber and someone else I can't think of the name but um, it was kind of like a lot of these offshoot superheroes um, some of them resembled some Marvel and DC characters and you'll see when uh, when I show you this cover so this is Iron Jaw issue number one First appearance of Iron Jaw. And uh, as you can see, this was done after Conan, Conan the Barbarian. Um, I was really, you know, intrigued by this cover. You can see some great action scenes on there. This cover is also done by Neil Adams. Um, so definitely, uh, if, if you're not familiar with that, there you go. Another fun fact. Um, and it's just a really nice cover. So that's my number nine. Number eight. Um, had to show some love to DC and this book was actually a book A-OK -okay to me from Jonathan um, a while back and this is World's Finest issue number 117 and uh, got a lot of action going on here you see um, Batman here in the corner and Robin and uh, you see uh, Superwoman um, attacking Superman and uh, to kind of to prevent Superman from attacking this little monster here on the side. Um, it's saying, Great Scott, Batwoman has superpowers and she's using them to stop Superman from fighting that fantastic creature. It's uh, early Silver Age. It is a 10 center. And uh, I forget who did the cover on this, but uh, it's just a nice cover. It says, the Super, the super Batwoman and the Super Creature. So uh, not something you see too often. So that's my number eight. Um, my number seven, this is definitely a book you've seen before. 
you know, and this is continuing on from uh, another female famous character, but this is from Marvel, and uh, this is Spider-Woman issue number one uh, from April of 1978. First solo title and new costume for Spider-Woman. Just like this, you see uh, Spider-Woman there spotlighted with uh, three different guns uh, pointed at her. And she's just trying to figure out how to get out of that situation. Nice little cover. I don't have the uh, Marvel Spotlight, her first appearance, but this is the next best thing. Um, I am going to show an indie book, of course, because I do love my indies. And uh, indies are notorious for having some really gruesome and action and fight scenes. So um, this was a fun series, I want to say, that came out maybe three, four years ago. And uh, this is Die, 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 issue number one. This was a fun series done by Robert Kirkman, um, Chris Burnham, Scott Gimple, and Nathan Fairburn. This was one of the uh, variant covers. So cover A looks exactly the same as these, but um, you get the word bubbles and uh, on this one. And this one says, I'm Paul. This one says, I'm Nate. And then the character at the bottom that is supposed to be like a, I don't know, a version of like Hillary Clinton says, I'm drunk. <laughs> But as you can see, a lot of, you know, the cover there, it's very violent, very gruesome. And that was like a lot of the series. So if you got any of the covers from, like the cover A's from this series, they're very bloodied, um, very action sequenced. But I decided just to pick the first one I got in there, which was a uh, cover uh, from issue number one. So uh, there you go. So that is my number six. So number five. We're going to be going back to DC, and we got another early book. This is Detective Comics, issue number 296. Got another good action uh, fight sequence there between um, Batman, Robin, and Planet Master. Um, another little-known villain. I believe this is the first appearance of Planet Master. Uh, you can see there he's throwing one of his, uh, I don't know, space rings. <laughs> at a building and uh, you see Batman and uh, Robin escaping there on looks like on top of a rooftop so it says look out Robin he's using Saturn's rings as you can see there Saturn's rings as devastating weapons um, I bought this book probably about four or five years ago for like I don't know, 40 50 bucks so I thought that was a good buy um, so that's my number five Yep, number five. So my last four or my top four are going to be all slabs and uh, they're going to be some pretty cool books in my opinion. Um, so number four, we got Captain Marvel, oh sorry, Marvel Superheroes issue number 13 and this is uh, featuring Captain Marvel and uh, this is the uh, first appearance of Carol Danvers. Um, second appearance of Captain Marvel. It is a Roy Thomas story and you can see I got a sign by Roy Thomas there in the middle I got actually I got this signed by him last year at um, at a comic show in uh, in Providence so that was really cool to meet him again and get this signed um, so I got this out of 6.0 which was really cool you know but uh, really nice action sequence you see there Captain Marvel fighting this um, uh, the Sentry I guess I never read this issue but uh, I just thought this was a great cover. So that's my number four. Um, number three. This is a book very important to me. As uh, Moon Knight is my favorite character. So I figured I got to have a Moon Knight book in here. To kind of celebrate the uh, fight covers. And if you have any Moon Knight books. You know that Moon Knight is notorious for his fight scenes. So uh, none other than getting his first appearance on here would be would be the would be at the service so this is uh werewolf by night issue number 32 uh first appearance of moon knight mark specter so uh obviously classic cover you see um moon knight fighting jack russell and uh if you ever read this issue it's uh pretty violent um he beats the crap out of jack russell nearly kills him in the issue 
but um, just a great, great cover, in my opinion. All right. So that's number three. And then the last two are going to be in the Golden Age. So um, I do like collecting war covers. So uh, this one is going to be coming from 1945, which was right towards the end of World War II. And we got Real Life Comics. This is issue number 23. And this is a nice Alex Schomburg cover. Uh, you can see here it says Private Johnny Fuentes. And they usually in this series spotlight a bunch of characters on the covers. Um, this is obviously a war cover. You see them. You got a tank in the background, a tank with some Nazis. You can see these little soldiers there in the green have the uh, uh, some some uh, swastika bands on them, and you got some um, American soldiers fighting against them. So this is a real nice way to get into um, Schomburg covers without paying um, Marvel like timely Schomburg prices. So this is a real affordable Schomburg cover. So that's my number two. And uh, my number one is quite possibly my favorite fighting cover in my collection. Um, if you're a fan of Frank Fazetta, you'll probably recognize this book without me even showing you the cover that I'm talking about, if you're familiar with his artwork. And uh, this is going back into the weird science fantasy and uh, this is Weird Science Fantasy issue number 29 from 1955. So uh, classic Frank Frazetta artwork, as it says there on the label. Um, so funny thing about this cover, initially, this was supposed to be part of Famous Funny series. So if you're familiar with the uh, classic Frank Frazetta covers from Famous Funnies, I believe it started right around like 207, 208, and it ran till um, 216. So this was supposed to be that last issue, I think 217 or 218, whatever that um, existing issue is. But um, they ended up finishing that series, and then they added it on to Weird Science Fantasy, which is also the last issue, as a, um, I believe, yeah, last pre-code issue in the uh in the series so that's why typically you see the weird science fantasies are more sci-fi covers and this one's actually like a fighting cover but then they added that uh little rocket there on the side like they do for that series so that's a little uh, fun fun uh fact about this book um, i just love this cover you can see this uh all these like you know cave caveman on there fighting um frank rosetta is known for doing great anatomy and is our artwork so you can see this exemplified in the cover and i just love this cover it's just um just a beautiful cover um so yeah that's my uh top 10 books um hopefully you guys enjoyed it hopefully you guys enjoyed my top 10 covers for the uh this month's challenge for for bearded and cole's uh comic top 10 challenge so